friends. Today we're going to go over my top 10 favorite books from last year. 2021 was not the best year of reading for me, but I tried my best. I read 3 physical books, 24 audiobooks, and 66 volumes of manga for a total of 93 different occurrences of reading. So let's talk about what I liked best in no particular order. Hi. While I was editing this video, I came to the realization that my book choices were a bit all over the place. Sorry about that in advance. I'm very much the kind of person that reads based on what I'm interested in at the moment. With that said, enjoy! First up, In the Flow by Elisa Vitti. This book is basically a guide to the menstrual cycle, how it functions, and how to work with your infradian rhythm to optimize your time, energy, diet, fitness, relationships, and more. I read this book cover to cover, and I highly recommend it to anybody with a uterus. I also think that students should get a pared down version of this for health class. The book does a really good job at explaining what a healthy cycle should look like, and it explains how to mitigate some of the more unpleasant side effects through targeting the root cause instead of targeting symptoms. It also teaches you how to take full advantage of the gifts that your second clock provides you instead of fighting against it. Next. Broke Millennial Takes On Investing by Aaron Lowry. This book is a beginner's guide to investing. It discusses how to get started and it walks you through the different avenues that you can use to do so. The book goes through basic terminology, how to know if investing is currently a financially viable option for you, how to deal with retirement accounts, how to start investing outside of retirement accounts, it even deals with newer topics like robo-advisors, investment apps, and ethical investing. I also read her first book, and one of the things I liked most about that book was how it was filled with very practical advice, and the same is true for this book. It gives an absolute beginner a very concrete place to start, and it's still a good book if you have some previous knowledge going in. It walks you through step by step. I've read other investing books, but this is the book that I would recommend to anybody who wants a comprehensive overview of how to start investing. Sitting at number 3. We have Notes on Grief by Chinamanda Ngazi Adaichi. In this book, she gives her thoughts on the life and death of her father. She talks about major parts of his life, her immediate and long-term thought process after learning of his death, and about the familial and cultural aspects of grief. For those that don't know, my mom passed away mid-2021, and since that point, I've been reading a lot of books about death and grief, if anything, just for a bit of a distraction, and this was one of them. You see, the author is Nigerian in Igbo, just like me, and I've generally resonated with a lot of her writing probably because of that similar background. So listening to her speak about losing her father and the aftermath of that made me feel a bit less alone. But putting aside cultural similarities, I think that anybody who's had the misfortune of losing a loved one will find this book infinitely relatable. She also narrates the audiobook, and since the book is basically just an amalgamation of her thoughts, it adds to the experience. Next we have A Matter of Death and Life by Marilyn Yalom and Ervin Yalom. This was another death book that I found interesting. The book was jointly written by a couple, one an anxiety and grief psychiatrist and the other one a writer. They take turns writing chapters about their life, their love, loss, and grief. It was interesting to view the grief process from the perspective of somebody who had dedicated their whole life to helping people through that process. I think that because of that knowledge, he was able to put into words a lot of what I was feeling in the first few months. It really helped me organize my thoughts. I liked it so much that after I finished listening to the audiobook, I bought myself a physical version just so I could take notes and reference it later. Speaking of the audiobook, the narration is fine and doesn't distract. Next up, we have The Three-Body Problem by Sik San Lu. This is the first book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. This first book covers first contact with the aliens and the feud between two factions, one that wants to help the aliens invade Earth, and another that wants to fight back against the aliens. I really enjoyed this sci-fi book and I'm excited to read more of it. I really appreciated the author's more grounded take on alien invasion. He gives us a lot of context about the aliens and their situation, which I found infinitely fascinating. I also like his take on what an invasion slash war would look like with an advanced civilization. While I didn't find the characters all that compelling, the concepts this book brings up are super interesting. 
As for the audiobook, the narration is fine and doesn't distract from the story. For number 6, we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This historical fantasy is also part of a trilogy. I was surprised by how grim the story could get at times. A lot of historical fantasies like to gloss over the more unsavory elements of their historical settings, so I appreciated their inclusion here. I also appreciated how well the magic system was integrated into the world. I also enjoyed the characters, especially Ren. She's meaningfully flawed, and she doesn't always make good choices. I really like the agency that the characters are given. Looking at the audiobook, it was a nice listen. The voices fit the characters, names weren't butchered, to my knowledge, and the voice acting kept me immersed in the story. Heading back in the sci-fi direction, we have Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. I marked up this book a lot. This book is a collection of eight short stories that look at some of the perceptions that we have as humans and explores how valid they are. All of the stories were so interesting in one way or the other, and I really enjoyed reading all of them and researching the ideas they were based on. My favorites were Understand, Story of Your Life, and Hell is the Absence of God. But like I said, all of them were interesting. As for the audiobook, it was good and didn't distract from the story. Next, we have The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Torton. This was a fun murder mystery. The book follows our main character as he tries to solve the murder of the titular Evelyn Hardcastle. I was really impressed with how tightly written this book was despite how complex its plot was. And I'll leave it at that because it's best if you go in blind with this book. As for the audiobook, I really liked it. All the characters seemed to fit their roles and their performances only added to my enjoyment. Moving on to manga, I was finally able to finish The Promised Neverland by Kayu Shirai and illustrated by Posca Demise. I loved the anime series, and when the second season decided to heavily deviate from the source material, I decided I'd pick up the manga, and it didn't disappoint. It was way better than the second season that we got, especially the Goldie Pond arc. While I still have issues with the ending, the lead up to the ending was great. If for some reason you haven't heard of this series, I recommend that you go in as blind as possible, but it has great characters and amazingly written stories and great art. Finally, we have Spy X Family by Tatsuya Endo. This manga just follows the misadventures of a fabricated family, which happens to include a spy, an assassin, and a telepath. It's equal parts hilarious and heartwarming, with a lot of cute family moments in between. I really enjoyed it and I can't wait for it to be animated. And we've reached the end. So, what were your favorite books from last year? Let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.